again, let's uh, praise God for the testimony of uh, Pastor Paski and uh, Sister Jo. Uh, hindi ko alam kung nakuha niyo yung uh, tinanong ni Pastor Paski kay Jo. What are we going to do with our extra time? Ang sagot, answer God's call. As we uh, end our uh, missions month, it's good for us to be reminded that you and I are commissioned by the Lord to take part in the Great uh, Commission. Uh, the Lord has been uh, using uh, Pastor Paski and Joe the past uh, few years to uh, bring people into His kingdom. And I think this is one of the uh, paradigm shifts that we are adopting as a church. Because for the past uh, few years, uh, people, God has been bringing people in, uh, in their area, in the property. I'm not sure, but sa may tubuhan yun, di ba, Pastor? So, from that uh, remote uh, area, people are getting to know the Lord Jesus Christ. But based on our practice before, we have a mindset that when we plant a church, we want to have a church similar, somehow similar to GCF South Metro. Meron kang building, may property ka. But I think the Lord has been breaking down the walls from our perspective on what the Great Commission is. So rather than uh, planting a church in a more central location in Nasugbu, we have decided to look at that gathering of people as a church itself. Can you imagine the number of people attending? Many times, uh, our connotation about church is we need to have a building, but the church is not a building. The church is the people of God. So God has blessed us with this opportunity to reach that area, that remote uh, area, with the gospel of Jesus. The prayer for, uh, for our church planting effort there is to either lease a property in that area or to buy a, a property. That is something that we are praying for because that is, also, that is already a, a church. This is also a, a good reminder for us that wherever the Lord has planted you, that is your mission field. Wherever the Lord has planted you, whatever you are doing in your season of life, that is your mission field. The Lord Jesus, before He ascended into heaven, He gathered His disciples in, in Galilee and He said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. There are four essential things that I want you to keep in mind when you think about the Great Commission. The first one is the essence of the Great Commission. The essence of the Great Commission is to make disciples. That is the essence of the Great Commission, to make disciples. And this is a command for every believer. So if you are in Christ, you are commissioned by God to what? To make disciples. So for the past 13 years, we have been in this journey of authentic discipleship and intentional disciple making, and somehow we are seeing the fruits of it. People discipling another. So in, uh, in 2024, our focus is what? Each one, disciple one. Can you tell the person beside you? Each one, disciple one. Each one, disciple one. So every one of us must disciple someone. That is the essence of the Great Commission. What is the essence of the Great Commission? Make disciples. Now, the extent of the Great Commission, it is global. Go therefore and make disciples of what? Of all nations, all people groups. But when we say global, it includes local. When you think about global, it involves local. It means that we need to influence this community with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And praise God for our different uh, clusters in our different uh, uh, areas because each of our cluster has been adopting an outreach. 
And we are making a difference in this community by the grace of God. Uh, the other day, our staff also visited the fire station near Landers. They're also ministering to the uh, police station somewhere in Evia so that we'll be able to reach out this community with the gospel of Jesus. But we don't only limit our mission locally, we also expand it in the different areas of the, of the Philippines and even beyond. And we praise God for uh, 33 missionaries that we are supporting and 11 mission agencies that we are partnering with. And some of them are here today. So if you are a partner of GCF South Metro, you are a missionary, you are a mis representing a mission agency, can I ask you to stand so we can uh, welcome you? From uh, San Pablo, can, we, can you stand please? Please remain standing. Praise God. Thank you for your, for your partnership in, in the ministry. Because uh, we cannot do everything. That's why we support missionaries, mission agencies, so that they can continue their work in God's kingdom. And we are not here to promote the name of, of GCF, South Metro. We are partnering with different churches, whether they carry the name of Jesus South Metro or not. I think that is the essence of the Great Commission. It is all about the Lord Jesus Christ. So what is the essence of the Great Commission? Make disciples. What is the extent? Global, right? Now, what is the expression of the Great Commission? Jesus said, Go out therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all things that I taught you. So going, baptizing, and teaching to obey. Don't forget to obey. We don't only teach them, because we, when we teach them, only it, only retain, it is only retained in their mind, head knowledge, no? Very clear what the Lord Jesus Christ said. Teaching them to obey, to observe all that I have commanded you. So when you think about the Great Commission, what is our expression? Going, directing people to Christ, sharing the gospel of Jesus, directing people to, to Jesus, going and then baptizing them. Uh, praise God, two weeks ago, we baptized about 15, uh, at least 15 uh, new believers. Praise God for that. Baptizing them, and most importantly, teaching them to what? To observe. So we need to keep in mind that you and I are called to make disciples. So we need to keep on directing people to Christ. We need to disciple them. We need to lead them towards spiritual maturity. And we also need to encourage them to disciple one. And that is the challenge for us. If you are not yet discipling someone, I hope and pray that God will give you the burden to disciple someone. But you won't only disciple that one, you will help that person grow towards spiritual maturity and guide him how he can or she can disciple one. That is the essence of the Great Commission. Make disciples. The extent Global expression, going, baptizing, teaching them to observe. And then the encouragement in the Great Commission is this. In verse 20, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So if you are taking part in the Great Commission, you will experience the abiding presence of Jesus. That is a promise. I am with you always to the end of the age. But theologically, even if you don't take part in the Great Commission, the Lord will always be with you. God will always be with you. But I think the difference here is that if we are experiencing, if we are taking part in the Great Commission, we would be able to see and sense the work of Jesus in our life. And that is the encouragement that we have today. If you are taking part in the Great Commission, you can be assured that the Lord is on your side. Can you tell the person beside you, the Lord is on your side? 
the Lord is on your side. Now, Pastor Paski again ask uh, Joe, what should we do with our extra time? And the answer is what? Answer God's call. Now, as I am thinking about time, time management, I can think about three kinds of people. The first one is this. Those who have extra time. Sino may extra time sa buhay? Uh, yeah, si Pastor Lino, Ate Beth, so medyo mga retirees. Sige, wag na kayong... Yung mga senior, wag na mahiya, di ba? <laughs> Oy, yung mga senior natin, they are pillars of our faith, ha? And very active yung ating seniors. pag a kayo ng fellowship nila, sobra. They are really passionate in sharing the gospel to them. Si Ate Celia nga, hindi siya umupo sa regular niya na upuan kasi na-meet namin si Ate. Senior siya. Wala siyang kasama. nag a siya dito before the pandemic. Five weeks pa lang siya na bumalik. Very passionate yung mga senior. So yung nag-anniversary sila a few months ago, I attended. Tinanong nila ako, ilang taon na daw ako. Akala nila senior na ako. <laughs> Alam mo, I have to admit it. Kasi kahit saan ako magpunta. Uh, maganda naman ang tanong nila. Sir, may privilege card ka? <laughs> Yan na ng mga senior citizen natin. Ilan taon na, Pastor? 55. Five years pa. So sabi sige, after five years, I will be a member of the season citizen. Hindi ako magiging in, uh, in denial. No? So praise God for that. So, ayun yung unang type of people. Those who have extra time. Yung pangalawa, eto. Those who have enough time. Yung parang... Tama-tama lang, di ba? 24 hours, uh, nakakapahinga ka ng konti, nababalansin mo yung time. Sino yung may enough time lang? Wala, oh, may konti. May isa. Oh, si Rolly, enough time. Wala. Eh, anong kategory kayo? <laughs> Palagay ko, ito yung kategory nyo. Ha? Those who have no time, tas ang kamay. Di ba? <laughs> Sino yung walang time, di ba? Sa dami na ginagawa natin sa buhay, wala tayong time. And yung question that was asked by Pastor Paski kanina is, what are we going to do with our extra time? The answer is, answer God's call. I think we need to ask the same question. What are we going to do or what are you going to do if you only have enough time? The answer is, Answer God's call. The same question. For those who have no time in life, what are you going to do if you have no time? Answer God's call. Praise God. That is the essence of our message today. We need to answer God's call. We need to keep on directing people to Christ. What are you going to do with the time that you have. Answer God's call. But I think there is a more uh, fundamental question that we need to ask ourselves. Why are we going to answer God's call? Because if we won't be able to answer that fundamental question, we won't be able to really discern what are we going to do with the time that we have. So why are we going to answer God's call? The answer is, time is short. The Lord Jesus Christ can come anytime soon. And there are hopeless and helpless people who need the Lord. So whether you have extra time, you have enough time, you have no time, we need to answer God's call of directing people to Christ so that those who are hopeless and helpless, they will have a firm hope in Jesus Christ and they will be able to find help 
in their time of need. In the parson that we have distributed today, I wrote about my perspective on the Israel-Hamas war that is raging on for the past few weeks. We know that fateful Saturday of October 7, the Hamas militants uh, you know, attack Israel, about 1,400 died. And then uh, the Israeli forces retaliated. And as of last Wednesday, more than 5,000 had died. And I think the number of those who died rose just the past few days. As I was thinking about this and looking at this from the overall plan of the Lord, I was uh, reminded by God that unfortunately in these kinds of wars and conflicts, there are innocent victims on both sides. There are innocent victims on both sides. And as we have been reminded by our key verse in this missions month, that the Lord requires us what? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly before God. I think it is wise for us, for God, to impose His divine justice to those who are against Him and to pray for God's mercies to those innocent victims caught in this war. But we also need to, to understand that this is not the only ongoing major war that is happening in the world. Last year, February, the Russia and Ukraine war is still ongoing. And aside from these two wars, there are, I think, at least five other major wars that is happening right now. A major war is considered major if there are 10,000 or more people killed the past 12 months. So imagine, about seven major wars ongoing right now. And many of these wars we are not even aware of. Our attention is only glued to those that we, we hear in the news. But aside from these seven major wars, there are 15 what they call minor wars. Minor wars classified when there are 10, 000, less than 1,000 to 9,999 people who died the past 12 months or so. And how should we look at these things? We need to be reminded of what the Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24, verse 6. He said, And you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. So we should not be alarmed of these things, because this has been predicted by God. And this is a, a wake-up call for us that the end is near. In verse uh, 7 and 8, Jesus said, For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these things are but the beginning of the birth pains. So everything in this temporal world will get worse. We can pray that there will be peace on earth, but we cannot put our hope that there will be peace on earth because it will only get worse. Instead, we need to put our hope in the Prince of Peace. That is our living hope. That is what the Apostle Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I just love this picture of the cross, and there is a family before the cross. Because there are so many issues that we are facing in our respective families. Very difficult to raise children in this generation. Very challenging. Very discouraging. Peace has become elusive in families. But today, I pray that God will give you confidence that the Lord is on your side. If you are in Christ Jesus, you have a living hope. Because the Lord Jesus Christ has resurrected, 
It means Jesus Christ is right at this very moment, seated at the right hand of the Father, overseeing this world. He's in full control of this world. Nothing escapes His sight. And all the issues that we are facing in life, the Lord knows about it. The difficulties that we are facing, the Lord knows about it. And the good thing here is that the Lord is on our side. So if you are alarmed by what you're hearing in the news, may the Lord give you confidence and peace that if you put your hope in Jesus Christ, God will sustain you. And that is the challenge that we have today. Whatever time you have in life, whether you have extra time, enough time, or no time, you and I are called to answer God's calling, to keep directing to Christ, no matter how difficult our personal circumstances are, because the Lord is on our side. That is the essence of Psalm 124. This is a, uh, a communal thanksgiving psalm, a community thanksgiving. And David is exhorting the congregation of Israel to bless God because the Lord has been on their side. That no matter how difficult their situation was, they can be confident that the Lord will help them. And this is the challenge that we have. No matter how difficult your circumstances are, we need to keep directing people to Christ. We have uh, seen uh, Bartolome, the, uh, the daughter of uh, Elderic Bartolome. She's 20 years old. Started uh, her college life in Malayan, somewhere in Laguna. And she had this burden to just reach out to her friends. So after a few months, you know, in, in the college, was able to gather four, four students, and right now they are 12. And she's leading them to Christ. The schedule is erratic, but they make it a point to meet every week so that they can just talk about Christ. And despite the situation of, uh, of her parents, health-wise, particularly for her mom, Teacher Dulce. Her difficulty did not hinder her from directing people to Christ. We pray for God's grace and mercies to be upon uh, Teacher Dulce, that God will do a miracle in her life, will provide for everything that they need. May God's grace and mercies be upon them and also with Elder Rick. But the challenge for us is no matter how difficult our circumstances are in life, we need to keep directing people to Christ. Just looking at you, many of you I know are going through difficulties in life, and yet you are so passionate about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that God will continue to reveal Himself to you and to your family and give you assurance that He will never leave you, He will never forsake you, and He will help you, especially during those times that you needed help the most. So in this Psalm 124, we will learn three things on how we should respond to difficulties in life so we can keep directing people to Christ. May I request everyone to, to stand as we read uh, Psalm 124. It only has uh, eight verses, so we will read the whole Psalm. And if you are uh, joining us uh, online, please uh, read alongside with us. So let's read the Psalm 124. Let's start in verse 1. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when people rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up alive 
when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. I pray, Father, that you will empower me with your Holy Spirit to be faithful to the word and the message you want delivered today. May you clear all our minds and our hearts and remove any hindrance, Lord, that will prevent us from hearing from you and listening to your word and taking to heart and applying in our life the message that you have for us. We ask, Father, for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. The first thing that we need to do when you experience difficulties in life so we can continue directing people to Christ is to thank God for His unending grace. In uh, verses 1 and 2, uh, David wrote, if it, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when people rose up against us. Again, anything that is repeated in the scripture, it must get our attention. And David is actually talking uh, to uh, addressing the congregation of Israel. And most likely, David was reflecting not only about he as king of Israel, but even maybe the Lord is using this as they look forward to the history of the nation of Israel. That if the Lord had not been on their side, the nation of Israel would have been gone already. We know that God, by His grace, has chosen Israel among all the many nations on this earth. He delivered them out of Exodus and gathered them as His treasured possession, as His holy nation, a kingdom of priests. And He entered into a covenant with them that they will be God's nation. Unfortunately, because of their stubbornness and rebelliousness, they suffered the consequences of their sin. The northern kingdom of Israel was dispersed by the kingdom of Assyria. The southern kingdom was exiled in Babylon. After 70 years, uh, the people returned to Jerusalem. But if you will trace back the history of Israel for centuries, they have been under different kingdoms and human authorities they're merely a group of people. But in God's sovereignty, in uh, May 1948, the nation of Israel was constituted as a political nation. Israel is different from the church. God has a different plan for Israel. God has a different plan for the church. We are part of the church. When the Lord Jesus Christ returns, He will meet us, the church, in the clouds. And those who are not in Christ will be left here and they would experience tribulation. And God will work things out for Israel, for those who will believe in the Messiah. And then after the seven-year tribulation, the Lord Jesus Christ will return, and He will establish His kingdom. If you will look at the, the map of, uh, of the Middle East, you know that Israel is just a very, very tiny political nation surrounded by huge and powerful armies. But Israel has not been overrun. That is the Lord working, protecting Israel despite their non-recognition of Jesus as the Messiah. But God has a different plan for Israel. But as followers of Jesus, we are recipients of God's promises to Abraham. So whatever truths we will learn from Psalm 124, although this was addressed to Israel, as a congregation, the principles we can apply in our life. And twice, David said, if the Lord 
had not been their help, they would remain in a dilemma because people rose up against them. In verse uh, 3 and 5, he said, Then they would have swallowed us up alive, and their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us, and then over us would have gone the raging waters. Now, pay attention to the images that the psalmist used. Flood, torrent, raging waters. Sometimes in life, when we focus on our problems, we feel that we are overwhelmed in life, right? We cannot do anything. Para tayo nalulunod sa problema. That is the image that the psalmist is giving. But here, what, what the psalmist is saying is, is, if the Lord had not been the one helping Israel, they would have surely been gone and eradicated. In the same way, for you and for me as followers of Jesus, if the Lord had not been our help, if the Lord had not been helping us, has not been helping us, I do not know where I will be. We would not know where we will be. And where we are right now, whatever we are doing in life right now, whatever our situation in life right now is only by the grace of God. It's only by the grace of God. Many of you are still grieving with the loss of your loved one. Many of you are still struggling financially. Many of you are struggling in your relationships. Many of you do not know what to do in life. But the mere fact that you are here today is an evidence of God's grace. It's very important for us to be in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Because if you are in Christ Jesus, our Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ is full of grace and truth. And those who receive Him have been given by God grace upon grace. If you uh, look at John 1, 14 to 16, referring to Jesus, John said, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glorious the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Look at verse 16. For from His fullness we have received, we have all received grace upon grace. You need to pay attention to that last phrase. Grace upon grace. Grace, it means overflowing, abounding, and ending grace. If you are in Christ Jesus, God's grace abounds in you. We just need to recognize how God's grace is working in our life. And God's grace will always be sufficient for those who are in Christ Jesus, our Lord. After the first service, uh, someone approached me and she was just sharing on how the Lord has been so good and gracious to their business the past years. Actually, many years ago when uh, Linda and I uh, met with the couple, they are in a crossroad of their life, whether they will stay in their respective companies or start their own business. But eventually, the Lord led them to start their own business. And during the pandemic, their business even prospered. Praise the Lord for that. And she was just sharing to me that God has been keeping the grace of God, blessings flowing upon them, even up to the present. That their dilemma now is how can they handle all these business opportunities that God is entrusting to them. But their posture, I believe, is honoring to God. Because they recognize that whatever they have is only by the grace of God. They cannot be where they are without the grace of God. And this is a reminder for us that if we will keep Christ at the center of our life. No matter how difficult our life could be, we can be rest assured that the grace of God will be sufficient for us. It was not an easy journey for them. They went through a lot of difficulties 
a lot of challenges. And yet, as they held on to their faith in Jesus, the Lord saw them through. And that is my prayer for, for all of you. Whether you are praying for God's grace, God's breakthrough in your business, in your profession, in your families, in whatever you are doing in life, I pray that God's grace will give you a breakthrough. The timing of you receiving God's blessing is not according to you. It is according to God. We just need to hold on to the reality that if you are in Christ, you need to thank God's grace. For His grace is unending. And it will be a big help for us, especially if you cannot somehow sense the grace of God. Pastor, hindi ka ma-experience yung grace ni Lord. If you cannot experience the grace of God, I think you need to have this discipline of trying to trace the sustaining hand of God. Because if you cannot say that you can see and sense the work of God in your midst, very difficult for you to recognize the grace of God. So we need to not only thank God for His unending grace, but we also need to trace the sustaining hand of God. So in the first part of uh, Psalm 124, David said, if the Lord had not been their help, they would remain in a dilemma. But in verses 5 to 6, he said, Blessed be the Lord who has not given us a prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. So look at what David is saying. He's encouraging the, the congregation to what? To bless the Lord. To thank the Lord. To praise the Lord for what God has done for them. They were trapped before. They are like a prey before in the words of death. But God allowed them to escape. It's past tense. Tapos na. So they were able to trace the power of God's hand that delivered them in their dilemma. So in the same way, as I mentioned to you before, there is power in looking back in the past on how God has delivered you and how God has been sustaining you. If you are confused in the present, you are feeling hopeless and helpless, you do not know what to do, it's good for you to pause and reflect. Look back in the past on how God has delivered you. And as you trace the sustaining hand of God, it will give you confidence and peace. And you will experience grace once again in the present. So very important for you to trace the hand of God in your life. This year, I am due for, uh, for sabbatical, or I was due for sabbatical. Tapos na kasi. Six years ago, I, uh, I had my one-year sabbatical. Uh, I was away from the church for a year. I have a different plan on what I want to do, but the Lord redirected my steps. And I was just thinking, uh, Lord, what do you want me to do in this one year of sabbatical? Because the plans that I had, the Lord redirected it. But looking back, I, I realized and saw the hand of God at work. Because during those uh, months that I do not know what to do, uh, my, my father, my late dad who passed away uh, passed away five, six years ago. I had the chance to take care of him together with Linda. We went to the U.S. for almost six months and I was able to be able to take care of my dad. That was not part of my plan. But looking back, I saw the hand of God at work. Even in the past 26 years, as a church family, we went through a lot of crises, different crises in different seasons. During those moments that we are in a very difficult season, it's very difficult to see the grace of God and to see the hand of God. But looking back, we are just so amazed on how God orchestrated things to bring us where we are now as a church. 
It is not only true in our church family, but it is also true in our individual lives. We need to learn to trace the sustaining hand of God so we will have hope in times of difficulties in the present. And I want to share with you uh, three things that I learned when I do not know what to do when I'm in a difficult situation, when I cannot experience the grace of God, when I cannot see the hand of God. Three things. First, you need to strive to be right with God. Strive to be right with God. Second, as you strive to be right with God, seek direction from God. Spend time in the Word. Spend time in prayer. Ask God for direction. Whatever is your concern or worries, problems right now, your difficulties right now, you do not know what to do. You cannot see the hand of God. You cannot see the grace of God. Strive to be right with God. Then seek direction from God. And as God reveals Himself to you through His Word, through your prayers, through your seeking counsel from spiritual leaders, whatever the Lord reveals to you, you need to surrender to God's will. Strive to be right with God. Seek direction from God. Surrender to God's will. In one of my devotions this week, I reflected on the life of David when uh, his son Absalom rebelled against him. Imagine he is king. He's powerful. He's mighty men. But his son took the hearts of the people and established himself as king. Because of David's love for his son, he chose to leave Jerusalem. And as the people are leaving Jerusalem, many of them are weeping, they are crying, and David was standing most probably at the edge of the gate of the city, and people are just going out of Jerusalem. And at the end of the line, Sadok, together with another priest, was carrying the Ark of God. And we know that the Ark of God is the representation of God's presence. Very important. If I were David, my son rebelled, I would want the ark of God to be with me because that is my security. But look at the posture of David. He trusted the grace of God will see him through. Because as the ark of God was going out of Jerusalem, he said to Sadok, you return the ark of God to Jerusalem. Leave it there. If the Lord will find favor upon me, if the Lord's grace will be upon me, I will return to Jerusalem. But if God will not be pleased with me, I will take whatever the Lord has for me. I think that should also be the same posture that we have. When we are facing difficulties, we need to surrender to God's will. And trust that God's grace will be sufficient for us. So if you are experiencing difficulties, for you to be able to keep on directing people to Christ, because Jesus Christ is coming soon, the first thing we need to do is what? Thank God's unending grace. And then trace the sustaining hand of God. And then... In case you will, re, you will really have difficulty in tracing the sustaining hand of God, you need to trust God's timing of help. And that is how Psalm 124 ended. In verse, uh, in verse 8, it says, Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. So he began by saying, If the Lord had not been on our side, I would remain in a dilemma. And then he affirmed at the end, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And when the Lord was described as someone who made heaven and earth, you need to be reminded about the sovereignty of God, that God is in control. He is powerful. And every time that you, you come to Him, every time that you come near the throne of grace, because of your faith in Jesus, 
You will be guaranteed that you will receive help in your time of need. In Hebrews uh, chapter 4, verse 14, it says, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. In verse 16, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Because the Lord Jesus Christ has resurrected, because the Lord Jesus Christ has ascended into heaven, we can always come before the throne of grace. And every time we come before the throne of grace, you will receive grace and mercy when you need it the most. Because the Lord is on our side. The Lord is always with us. So we need to hold on to our confession. We need to hold on to what we believe on who Jesus Christ is and what He is doing and what He will do in the future. Jesus Christ is our only living hope. And if you are here and you do not know what I'm talking about, how you will experience the living hope that we can have in Jesus, I want to tell you that there's no accident in God's kingdom. God loves you. God cares for you. All of us are sinners destined to be separated from God. No amount of good works, no matter how good we think we are, we can never earn that right to have that living hope in Christ Jesus. You need to confess your sin. You need to repent of your sin. And you need to believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins and my sins that we can never repay. Whether you are here on site or online, this offer of eternal life can only be yours if you will receive it. I cannot do it for you. But I pray that the Holy Spirit will work in your heart and bring you to a point of hopelessness and helplessness apart from Christ. So all you need to do is to confess of your sin and believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for the sins that you can never repay. If this is the first time that you will do that, approach me. Approach any of our pastors who will be here and tell them, I just put my faith in Jesus. If you are online, just type there on the comment section, I have placed my faith in Jesus today, and someone will get in touch with you. So if you want to receive help in your time of need, you need to believe in, in Jesus. But for the rest of us who are in Christ Jesus, I want to assure you that whatever difficulty you are facing now, approach the throne of grace and you will receive grace and mercy in your time of need. And if ever you are in that period of waiting for such a long time already, and you might be wondering, Pastor, ang tagal ko na nagaantay, kailan ba darating yung help na inaantay ko sa Panginoon? Wala pang sagot si Lord. If you are in that situation, the first thing I want you to think about is that God is great. God is great. God is great. When you think about God is great, you need to be reminded that God is in control. God is great. God is in control. Second, God cares for you. Because God is good. And third, God is gracious. God gives us what we do not deserve. And everything that we have is only by the grace of God. So God is great. He is in control. God is good. He cares for you. God is gracious. He gives what we do not deserve. And then think about God's glory. God will work things out for our good and for His glory. So whether in your time of difficulty, the Lord had answered your prayer with yes or wait, or no, think about that. God is great. He is in control. God is good. He cares for you. God is gracious. He will give what you do not deserve. And then God's glory. Eventually, He will work things out for our good and for His glory. So, the challenge for us today is this. Whatever time you have in life, whether you have extra time, enough time, or no time, we are called by God.
We need to answer God's call and direct people to Christ whether you have extra time, enough time, or no time. Because Jesus Christ is coming soon. And when you take part in the Great Commission, remember, the Lord is on our side. Can you tell the person beside you? The Lord is on our side. The Lord is on our side. And if the Lord is on your side, God will fight all your battles in life. Amen? So that is the message for us today. The Lord is on our side, and God will fight the battle for you. May the Lord give you encouragement that no matter how difficulty that you are experiencing in life, the Lord is on our side. So we need to just keep on directing people to Christ. So as we uh, call on our praise team, that is what uh, we want to do. We want to declare that the Lord Jesus Christ is fighting the battle for us. And if you will just uh, look at Psalm 124, verse 6, it says, Blessed be the Lord who has not given us a spray to their teeth. In short, as the Lord remind, as David reminded the Israelites, and as we have been reminded today that the Lord is on our side, we need to bless the Lord. And we need to declare that God is fighting 